Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, my friends. You're certainly looking at a bit of an odd controller in front of you right now. And that's exactly what today's video is about. I dub this the Rufal Box. You've heard of the Hitbox, you've heard of Leverless Controllers. This is uh, either the next evolution of which, or at the very least, something that works for me. So we're gonna go into what exactly this controller is, the decisions around the layout, because as you can see, it's certainly not quite the usual layout you're used to, at least as far as leverless controllers go, and talk about just the decisions that led up to this. So this stick, this controller, is a combination of ergonomics and also some ideas for the future as Street Fighter VI on the horizon, gonna be the next big game for some quite a few years, I would I think it's very safe to say. And some decisions of this created stick here are with Street Fighter VI in mind. So really quick before we get into the meat of this, just so you're not confused, the layout here is back, forward, down, and up, which you would expect, the usual kind of hitbox layout, leverless layout, and then light, medium, heavy, light, medium, heavy, and the usual L2, R2, L1, R1, all that kind of stuff. One of them is here, as you would expect, and the other two are moved over here. And these default to the shortcuts for parry and drive impact on Street Fighter VI. And this last guy here is a second up button. So yes, there is two up buttons here. And we'll get more into it in time. Now, the story behind this. So a few months ago, I was contacted by one Fight Stick a la mode, aka Hush My Sweet, a Fight Stick maker and one of the moderators at r slash Fight Sticks over on Reddit. And they basically asked me if I could design my own style of leverless controller, what would I do? And well, this is the answer. So Hush My Sweet has a long history of making fight sticks, a long, long history. They have their own YouTube channel as well, full of a lot of great information about fight sticks, controllers, all that kind of stuff, the history behind them. And there's also a video on the construction of this very controller you're seeing here. So I highly suggest you check that out and I'll have links to that in the video description for you to peruse and browse. Suffice it to say, they are someone who knows a lot more about fight sticks than I do. So I definitely appreciated their help in the whole design process for sure. Without them, this would not have been possible in any way, shape or form. So now let's talk about the device itself. So obviously here, about the enclosure, uh, we do have some fancy art here, very on brand. I did not know they were actually gonna do this. They actually went <laughs> above and beyond the extra mile here. Uh, so this is some art, was done up by one Creeps and Babes, and I'll have a link to their stuff in the video description as well if you would like to check that out. Like, it is legitimately fantastic. A big screaming baboon, it's on brand for me, obviously. The monkey man of the FGC and all that, so I love it. And the enclosure, you can see here. So this is a enclosure done up by one Johnny Phrase. And I'll have a link to uh, their site as well there. And also, if you want a PSD of the layout of the buttons, I'll provide that for you also in the video description. Lots of stuff in the video description. Go check that out. So for the box enclosure on the front, we have the main buttons, and we're gonna talk more about that. It's gonna be the meat of the video, I suppose. On the sides, you have all the things you need for PlayStation. You have your start button, your touchpad button, uh, L3, R3, all that kind of stuff. All the buttons you would have on a regular controller. On the back here, we do have an anti-slip pad. I do normally play on my lap. For the purposes of the video, it's on my desk, but normally I play on my lap. So having this pad here so the stick doesn't just like shake around on your lap, all that kind of stuff, that is actually very fantastic. That's great. And also the logo here of Hush My Sweet. And now let's talk about the stick here and all the decisions that led into it. So one, uh, it does have a PS5 board in it, so it's fully PS5 compatible. That's great, you need that. Uh, with Street Fighter VI sort of kickstarting off the new generation of fighting games, uh, PS5 is definitely going to be the console going forward for the most part. I know there's going to be a lot of Xbox people, but well, PS5 is kind of how it's just going to be, right? That, that's just, them's the breaks. The buttons are standard Sanwa arcade buttons, you know, not breaking the mold on that. But obviously what is breaking the mold is the actual just layout, right? So here's my thoughts. First, the ergonomics. One, uh, if you follow along with some other uh, videos where I've talked about sticks and controllers, my left arm is jacked up you know i can still use it that's great but it's not getting better with age and i'm almost 40 at this point and uh when it comes to using stick and all that which you know that's what i've used all my life right i feel there's an end of the road for me due to the problems with my left arm so moving to leverless is a survival mechanism basically 
I'm not here to have all the cheater box techniques, all that kind of stuff. I'm here so I can keep playing five years from now, right? So that's one of the main reasons I'm switching over to leverless. And the layout of the buttons, as you see here, which is a little bit different than usual, is a big part of that. So as we said earlier, there's two jump buttons. Normally, on a leverless controller, hitbox style controller, if you have your movement here and you have your attack buttons here, then the jump button is usually somewhere right around here, where there is exactly no jump button on this controller. And that precludes, especially for me that I play on my lap, right? Normally, the correct way to hold it is sort of like this. And therefore, both of your thumbs have access to the jump button. And that works great for probably like 99% of people. For me, holding my hands like this uh, for a uh, arcade stick or a controller or whatever is not comfortable at all. How I normally hold my hands is more like this. And you might notice this is exactly where my thumbs lie for these uh, up buttons, which is the whole point. This is how I prefer to hold it, which means if I want to hit the uh, middle jump button, it's a little difficult on a regular hitbox. I have to like shift my hands over, which to me defeats the point. I do not want to shift my hands, especially with my bad hand here. I want to be able to do everything I can from the comfort of this one spot. I don't want to have to move my hands at all. And that is a lot of the design. So therefore I have my movement buttons here. Like usual, I have my tech buttons here. I do prefer bigger attack buttons. So these are the 24 millimeter small buttons that you usually see on a hitbox. And these are the larger 30 millimeter buttons you see on normal arcade sticks. So I have mixed and match. I like small buttons for movement, big buttons for attack. And of course my two jump buttons. And therefore, so when I'm playing, I can just go in and go jump, kick, there we go. Or conversely, if I'm feeling it, I can also jump with my left thumb as well. Uh, all things being equal, the bulk of the work is on my right thumb. But if I feel like using my left thumb, it's an option. It's purely for ergonomics. There's no mechanical advantage at all. Uh, they're both linked to the exact same up button, so there's no like gimmicks or whatever. It's just purely so I'm more comfortable while playing. That is that. That's it. That's all. I know uh, someone's probably going to post in the comments below. Technically, Rufalmonger, this is not CPT legal because there's two up buttons. You can't have two up buttons like as actual buttons. I know one. I don't care. Uh, I'm probably not entering many CPT events myself. Two, they don't care because I've seen controllers at CPT events that have multiple up buttons. I've seen more than one ergo box at a CPT event, which means they have implicit uh, approval of ergonomic controllers because I've seen them on camera on stream already. So nuts to those rules. And if it had to come down to it, since I use the right jump more than the left jump, I could just disable it if it ever became an issue and someone got mad over purely ergonomic reasons. So. It's whatever to me, it doesn't bother me at all. Now, the big story, these two guys, this is where the biggest differentiation you're gonna see from any other controller. Cause normally the buttons you would see here at the end of any given usual arcade stick layout or leverless controller layout are now here. And here's the decision. One, uh, as someone who's played on stick most of my life, I don't use these buttons at all. <laughs> I don't, I really do not. The only time I do is if I can bind them to training mode stuff where I can hit like record, play, that's it. That's the only time I ever use them. Otherwise it might as well be dead buttons to me. So my initial thought is since I'm gonna design my own controller, why don't I put buttons that are usually dead buttons to me somewhere where I can actually use them and boom, now they wind up here. So this defaults to drive impact in Street Fighter VI. This defaults here to drive parry and they both have big uses. One, drive impact's gonna be a thing in Street Fighter VI, we all know it, right? And normally, if you're playing on this style of layout, the default command is two heavies. And if you're playing like this, which I do, going like this to react, <clears throat> like you can do it, but it's just gonna be slow, right? It is not particularly quick. And it's an advantage, I think, to controllers, like a regular PS5 pad, or PS4 pad, or whatever, Xbox pad, when you already have one of your thumb, like your fingers on one of the triggers, that means you're gonna be able to react to drive impact much faster than an arcade stick layout. So this guy here defaults to the macro. Specifically, this is L1, this is L2, just so you know. And yeah, it's drive parry. So now when I'm doing this, instead of having to go as like a reaction to a drive impact, I can just go beep. And yes, I'm making silly noises for one. I apologize for that. And two, even if it's like one or two frames faster from this to this, that's one or two frames faster. That could be the difference between getting the drive 
Impact off and winning the match or missing the window and losing the match. So having this on one dedicated single button makes all the difference in the world to me. Also, uh, once again here, this uh, up button here, which is the secondary up is not as important to me. If I ever care to, I could rewire it. So this is uh, that button instead. So when I'm moving, I could just have uh, my anti-drive impact as here as well. So if I see the drive impact, I just go blip. And that's it, that's all, instead of just using this. So either way, it's ergonomic, and also it gives you actual gameplay advantage, even if it's just a frame or two. A frame or two is the world in fighting games. Being able to re just react in DI back, that's the reason. Now that said, I think that's a big deal, and I think I'm not the only one who has this idea. I think in the coming weeks, months, and years, you will see more controllers, however they wind up looking, that is gonna have a button dedicated to drive impact macro, heavy punch, heavy kick. I don't know where other people will wanna put it. It works here for me, because I can just go like this, and as soon as I see it, it goes real quick, right? Some other people might have it here in the thumb area or to the side, whatever works for them, but I'm, I guarantee you're gonna see the tech evolve this way. Now, speaking of the tech. So this guy is drive parry. And drive parry, being on two mediums, is not as big of a deal. It's much easier to reach when you're just doing whatever, especially with my weird hand position that I like holding, right? It is much less of an ass to do this than it is to go over here. Just less travel time, right? But still own dedicated button. And with this in mind, one of the decisions that helps here is with the dashes. So as you probably are well aware, you parry, dash out, you get the drive rush. And doing raw drive rush is gonna be very important. Like if you just do it in the middle of a combo, you just tap forward four, it's not a big deal. But if you want to do it in uh, neutral, pressure, whatever, you got to do it this way. And one of the things about it is the way you usually do it is you hit the parry, hit 4-4. And there is a split second, like it, even if it's just like a frame or two, right? You turn blue first doing the parry, and then you drive rush out, right? But it's just wasted time. Now, there is the option to do this, where you hit forward first, and then you hit the parry, and you get it like that, right? But the problem is, since you're working with two different hands, a lot of time you can get it, but if you're a little bit less than perfect, you might accidentally just get a dash instead of there. That's a legitimate mess up right there. You might accidentally get a dash instead. Like there's an element of screwing it up. However, since it's here, right where my movement fingers are anyways, now I can hit forward and then forward again with this button here set to the macro at the same time. And then when you know it, You get a frame perfect drive rush every single time. Simple as that. So you can either plink it, like hit forward, then forward and the button again, like that, the old plink motion, or you just hit them at the same time. Whatever works for you. But as long as you just do it properly, and here it is on the player two side, just to show that it's not just some player one gimmick, right? Uh, as long as you do it properly, it just makes these a lot more easier. And uh, for me, who plays grappler characters, I feel and we are gonna have to figure out the meta as we go, but I feel that grapplers are gonna be more predisposed than other characters to do raw drive rushes, just, you know, to either hit a button to get the plus frames to go for the grab mix up, or just say screw it and just run in and just drive rush and grab, right? So being able to just do this all like on the one hand, I feel is gonna be very advantageous. So this is kind of a mix of ergonomics, cause I'm getting old, my hands are bad, I don't want to have to move my hands too much and I definitely don't want to move all across the thing. Just want to stay in a mostly fixed position here. So ergonomics, especially with the two jumps and also some kind of gaming the system a little bit. Let's call it for what it is. Gaming the system a little bit in the context specifically of Street Fighter 6. And of course other games, for me anyways, once again, I never use these buttons anyways when they're over here. So for other games, if these have any advantages or uses, then all the better yet. And that's some of the thoughts and design process I went with choosing this exact layout. Once again, uh, the box, the case, you can find the link for that and the specific PSD with these exact button layouts. You can also find that in the video description. And of course, there's just the general leverless stuff, right? Uh, for me, bad left arm, doing this, moving around this way, is so much less stressful than uh, just the usual stick stuff, right? Like, I'm not gonna get, I don't want to get too much detail in it, but uh, back when DNF Duel was newer and I was recording some of the combo guides, specifically the Troubleshooter guide. Troubleshooter has so many dashes per combo, so many mini dashes. 
And by the end of recording that combo guide, I almost had to go to the hospital because that's how much pain I was in just doing that. And that's when I decided like, I have to move forward for the future and Leverless is the way for me just purely so I can keep playing fighting games in my older years. So just doing this, there's no stress at all on my wrist. There's no stress at all on my forearm. Uh, once again, too, I have a much bigger box enclosure, so I have plenty of room to rest my wrist and forearm. I like that very much. That is very attractive to me. And this is just kind of the way it goes. And if it comes with cheater uppercuts, well then, hey, why not, right? That makes life a lot easier. Cause yes, uh, this does have the uh, firmware patch where, so you no know, left and right equals neutral and down and up now equal neutral as well. So therefore the old 639 uppercuts are a thing again. All you gotta do is hit forward, down, up and punch. And when you do it quick enough, then it comes a pretty quick uppercut, very quick motion. A lot quicker than uh, the usual motion, which is still not slow in any way, right? But however, if you're just looking for that extra frame or two speed compared to a regular uppercut, the cheater uppercut option is there, right? So we'll take them the wins where we can get them. So yeah, that's just some of my thought processes and ideas behind the Rufal Box. Once again, I think come the launch of Street Fighter VI, especially going into the future and the lifespan of Street Fighter VI, you're gonna see a lot of custom non-standard controllers. Some of them will be like for me, ergonomics. And then well, some of them will also be like me where, you know, working in maybe just a little bit of cheating, right? Just a little bit of extra advantage. That's perfectly legal and perfectly nice. At the bare minimum, as the FGC gets older, we're gonna see a lot more people using controllers that's a lot easier on the digits, the wrist and the forearm than say a traditional arcade stick. That I feel is very much a guarantee. So that said, with the whole stick, the whole package, all that kind of stuff, let me know what you think. Am I a madman? Am I too crazy? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you have something you would have done differently? Please post it in the comments below. And once again, uh, for the gentleman who helped me put this whole thing together, Hush My Sweet, check out their YouTube channel, linked in the description below. Also the artist here, Creeps and Babes, who did the absolutely lovely art, also in the video description, just check the video description is what I'm trying to say, right? Uh, and otherwise, I guess we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some fighting games.